be a race car driver someday. It's a great sport. I love it to death, you know. It's, you know, it's all I've ever known, racing. What if I told you there was a kid with just dozens of Cup Series starts to his name who had to put an entire fan base and sport on his back? with nothing but a famous last name. What if I told you he persevered? This is a story about arguably the most loved athlete in modern sports history. Checker flag and his first right to win. Dale Earnhardt Jr. takes it. Dale Earnhardt Jr. A thousand times we've heard it, above the engine's thunder, the three car makes a move on another driver's blunder. The announcer screams into his mic, Arnhardt slammed the door. With a quick glance down to the track, we see three coming out of four. Four wide they come, amid the smoke, and sometimes even more. They're heading for the checkered and racing door to door. But one car dominates, it's heading up the pack. Its driver's name is Dale, and the car is painted black. They're standing on the throttles, and the tacks are in the red. They're doing all they can, but they can't pass Ironhead. They try him high, they try him low. The track's not wide enough. When three comes out of four, the Intimidator's just too tough. But the good lord sent an angel, dressed in good wrench black to fetch home a hero from that Daytona track. The angel came down on turn four from that breezy Florida sky and the news he left behind made brave and strong men cry. We've lost Dale Arnhart, we heard Mike Hilton say, and we'll always remember the sadness on that day. And a little bit of sadness will dwell forevermore as we vainly look for three coming out of four. Now the Saints will fill the grandstands at that big track in the sky. There's a rookie in the field and that man can really fly. And no one has to ask his name or wonder who he may be because they all know that black car with the big white number three. This is undoubtedly one of the toughest announcements that I've ever personally had to make. Uh, but after the accident and turn four at the end of the Daytona 500, uh, we've lost Dale Earnhardt.
The future starts now for Dale Earnhardt Jr. And all eyes are on 24-year-old Dale Earnhardt Jr. After losing the seven-time champion, the face of the sport, and his father, the young Dale Jr. had the weight of the world on his shoulders. Steve Park dropped right in single file, but Tony Stewart challenged Ricky Rudd and moves up to third. Oh, we got trouble, trouble already. Three cars, four it's Dale cars. Jr., it's Dale Jr. This cannot be happening to that young man. And from the last lap of last Sunday to the first lap of this. Inheriting millions of fans across the world and having the pressure to be even half the driver Dale Sr. was, was mounting. The first return to Daytona wasn't an easy one, but it had the makings to be the best feel-good story in American sports history. The roar you hear, 43 Winston Cup engines coming to life. The rumble you feel, the pounding heartbeat of 180,000 fans. The next step in the race to the championship is about to begin. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. in effect became the man of the Earnhardt family when he walked his sister Kelly down the aisle for her wedding. A job that was originally scheduled for his father. Now at the track that claimed his father's life, Dale Jr. looks to assume another role, becoming the man of the Winston Cup Series at Daytona. He has a fast car, just enough experience, and tonight most likely a little help from above. Can Dale Jr. dominate Daytona like dear old dad used to? Only time will tell, but tonight he might get a good start. Winston Cup Series champion begin now. The crowd is on its feet. The 43rd Pepsi 400 goes green on NBC. the silent lap three. We feel it appropriate and we're proud to carry that tradition on. to the lead. Three deep for sixth spot on down as Ward Burton gets shuffled back to fifth. Dale Earnhardt Jr. goes for the lead. The fans all jump to their feet. Still down there. Still there. Out clear, front. Clear. Earnhardt clear. Jr. leads at Daytona. Check out those fans, they are absolutely loving this as Bernard goes to the front. We talked all throughout the week what the young man's state of mind must be coming back here. And we talked about people going about business as usual. Benny. Dale Jr.'s put on the facade of business as usual, but I've detected through our interviews with him that this, that's not a facade. It has been business as usual. But I can also also tell by the interviews, and I talked to Tony Uri Sr., his team manager, this young man, Alan, wants this race as badly as he never want anything in his life. He wants this one today. Can you imagine what victory thought? No, I can't even think about it. But we've got a long ways to go. Tony Uri Sr. is the crew chief for Dale Earnhardt Jr. You've led 111 laps tonight, but it seems like time might be running out. He's sitting back there with caution laps counting away. Yeah, uh, there's situations that nobody likes to see on a plate race call. They'll be five wide when they come back, and there ain't no telling what's going to happen. Uh, 
definitely best man's probably not going to win this race. It's, uh, ain't no telling what's going to happen. Do you think he will not win the race? Because he said on the radio, I think we can get past him. Well, we definitely got the car to pass him. And uh, we're definitely going to give it a try. And uh, that Budweiser Chevy will get there. We're going to get there. But uh, this plate racing stuff, it's all with who's in front of you and who's behind you or whatever. So you don't have no control of your own destiny. Uh, if we can get there, we'll get there. If we can't, hey, we know who had the fastest car tonight. From cars behind him, he has been promised help, but he does not know if he's going to be able to get to the front in time. Oh, man, six laps to go when they throw the green flag. And it, passing on the restricted plate racetracks is a tough thing to do. We've seen cars unable to pass him all night long, but we haven't seen how easily he can pass. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Oh, is sixth flag. in line, and Benson leads on the restart. Once again, you can't pass on the inside if you get to that line. All right, it's free game. Let's go. Ward Burton quickly down to the inside to try and grab a spot. We see Jeff Gordon back on the racetrack. Bernard Jr. lag back, trying to get him to run. He has that run, but Tony Stewart pulls up in front of him. He's got that Jeremy Mayfield. He's, he's got time, I guess. Schrader pushed to the outside lane. 20 car is the only one upstairs. He's still outside. Look at still Junior there, go there, up clear, to fourth. Clear. Here comes Bobby Labonte pushing through. Junior to the outside of Mayfield for third. Seven's coming with you, seven's coming. Mike seven's Wallace coming. with him. We can hear Ty Norris telling him, you got help on the outside, Junior. Does Blaney block in the 93? What about Benson? They're going to stay on the bottom of the racetrack. I think they're going to give the outside to Junior. Jeff Gordon getting black flagged by NASCAR. There, Here's Dale there. Jr. to the outside of Dave Blaney for second spot. Mayfield pushes him along in the draft. Still there, still there. To the outside for the lead in turn four. Still Dale Earnhardt Jr. rockets to the front still of there. Daytona. Listen to the crowd. And look at this crowd here, behind here. him. Look at this oh, race here. behind him. And Tony Stewart gets thrown underneath four the four yellow down. line. Tony Stewart will be black flagged by NASCAR. Okay. Black flag for Tony Stewart for going below the out of bounds line. All clear, all clear. And Tony Stewart is in second spot with a million dollars on the line. Okay, 20 is coming, but you're all clear, all clear. Here comes Bobby Labonte. He's got a million dollars on the line as well. It's Michael Waltrip who's pushing him toward the front. And Labonte's underneath the yellow line on the back stretch. This thing's not over yet. Michael Waltrip trying to become the first man to sweep a season at Daytona since 1982. He's up to third. 18-15 behind you. Three laps to go. Ward Burton dives low. Low, but you're clear. I'll tell you one thing. If Junior was running three-quarter fall, all that ended because he's running wide open right now. Ward Burton rocketing toward the front. Look at him on the outside. Behind you. Outside of Michael Walsh for third. Here's Back Elliot Sadler up to you. fifth. Where'd he come from in the Wood Brothers car? He's me. Frantic, intense racing in the final laps at Daytona, but it's still Dale Earnhardt Jr. out in front. They've got to take the win away from him. Tony Urey Jr. is clapping, saying, come on, Jr., come on. Two to go. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to block, trying to keep those cars behind him, desperately trying to keep them behind him. He runs so good through the corner, he lets them get a run on him down the straightaway. Michael oh, Waltrip dives underneath Bobby Labonte. They bump on the back stretch. Waltrip to second. Elliott Sadler and Rusty Wallace with him. Coming behind you. Now two team cars race in the one and two positions. That's who Dale needs to see in his rearview mirror right now. That's the best thing he can see. But a white flag. 
Real Michael like Waltrip behind. blocked for Dale Jr. Will he try to win the race himself? White flag is out. Final lap at Daytona. 180,000 on their feet, screaming wildly. Two and a half miles to go. Just exactly the opposite of the Daytona 500. It was 15 and 8. Elliott Sadler is trying to keep Bobby Labonte behind. He can't do it. But he does move down in front of Rusty Wallace on that fast line. All clear, all clear. Bobby Labonte looking for some help, trying to get up there. His teammate, Tony Stewart, has never answered the black flag. And they're four wide back between the Wallace boys. Here they come, turn four, final lap of the Pepsi 400. Michael Waltrip in second, but it's going to be Dale Earnhardt Jr. using lessons learned from his father to go from sixth to first and score the victory in the Pepsi 400. That's, that's, uh, that's unbelievable. Yes! The band behind you did it for yes. you. You guys celebrate. You love you, band. You did it. That was beautiful. Very, was very nice. Junior, you're happy. All right, you Look at that awesome. smile. Wow. I don't think there's anybody here that didn't want to see that. Sentimental favorite, emotional favorite. Earlier in the broadcast, we talk among ourselves some of the moves he made on the track today. Looked like his father behind the wheel. I am speechless. That wasn't like the old man. I don't know what was, Tony Sr. Hey, he had a good teacher. He, uh, he told him a lot about this place. He loves this place. Hell, listen to them fans up there. They love that kid to death. I saw you look to the heavens with a few laps to go. What did you say? Well, he said he knew he could beat them. We just didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, Remember when we've seen this before? <laughs> and Steve Mills joining the fray now. Yeah, man, D.I.'s tough. The we can celebrate! <laughs> what a finish at Daytona. Dell Jr. on top of the car in the infield. The 1998 Daytona 500, when his father finally won the Great American Race, he threw the car into the grass doing victory donuts. Everybody joining in the celebration. That's Chocolate Myers, longtime crewman for Dale at Richard Childress Racing. Six to first in the final six laps. All right, Mikey, you celebrate too. You never got to celebrate your win in February. You celebrate now. Man, that's just so cool. Storybook ending. Oh, this is great. <laughs> Exactly the right place. Yes, exactly the right place. I don't know how he knew to do that, but that's where he needed to go. <laughs> and that poor NASCAR official is responsible for that car to make sure it gets through tech inspection cleanly. There had to be about 300 people around it down there on the grass. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is our winner, and Chevy congratulates him in the number eight Monte Carlo on a big win tonight. And he'll tell you the only thing that comes close to Monte Carlo's reputation on the track is its reputation on the street. Monte Carlo, more champions depend on Chevy. We'll be there. To victory lane and Bill Weber.
Tony Yuri Sr., Dale Earnhardt Jr. These friends of yours? Man, I just don't know what to say. I'm wore out. I can't think. Uh, I guess I gotta thank my buddy Tony, my crew chief, for hanging in there with me. All my friends, all the guys on the crew, Budweiser, Remington. I got to talk all night. How did you get to the front after the restart? I had a great car. It was all car, 100%. I just hold on. Yeah. You've learned a few things through the years, though, haven't you, from certain people? Yeah. Yeah. He's, he was with me tonight. I, I don't know how I did it. But he was there, and Mike will help me. I guess we're even now. You told Marty Snyder, Dale, you felt lonely on Father's Day. And there were times that you wanted to cry, but you couldn't. Did you cry tonight? I'll be crying sooner or later. I don't know. I feel so good right now. I'm wore out there. You know when your dad got his first win at Daytona? Huh. His first Winston Cup points win came 11 years ago today, July 7, 1990. So special. I dedicate this win to him. I mean, there ain't nobody else that I could dedicate it to that it would mean more to me. I want to say hey to Teresa back home. I hope she's loving this because we sure are. Thank you. The 2001 Pepsi 400 was instrumental in the healing process of NASCAR and just as instrumental in Dale Jr's career. There was one guy that had to take the reins from Dale from a competition standpoint and another that had to heal the hearts. The years went by and Junior was winning races, even competing for a championship. In just his fifth try, Dale Jr. was trying to do something that took his father 20 years to accomplish, win the Daytona 500. Gentlemen, start your engines. <laughs> I talked to Dale Earnhardt Jr. about just how big this race is, and here's what he told me. There are great drivers that never win the Daytona 500 and great drivers that never win a series championship. He said he doesn't know what would bother a driver more, ending his career without a Daytona 500 win or without winning a series championship. He added he hopes he never has to find out. Alan? Bill, he's on a lot of people's minds as a heavy favorite to win this Daytona 500 this year. But we know that many, many times the fastest car does not win this race. It's always filled with dramatic twists and turns as we get into those final laps. And that's why our junior keep asking Skeeney for that information, because if he sees the 20 laying back, he needs to lay back a little bit. And his dad, Dale Earnhardt, was the greatest of that. He saw a car backing up. He would back up to them, so they couldn't get that run. Junior might be doing the same thing. Tony Stewart was so optimistic all week long. After some early speed week troubles, they got that 20 car handling dialed in on Thursday when they ran the qualifying races here that set the starting order for the 500. And since then, he's been very bubbly. Got into the final practice crash yesterday, turned his week on a downside, but right from the start of this race, that 20 car has been fast. It got up in the early laps, drafted with Dale Earnhardt Jr. to the front. And these two drivers have dominated most of this race. And Bush lit up the race back there. Got to run. You're all clear. Bob and Weave. See, that was a spotter on the back stretch that gave him that signal. So Stevie Reeves from the front stretch really can't see that well coming off turn two. Five to go when they come to the start finish line. That's frustrating for the guys behind Junior and Junior's he's so antsy right now he wants this thing to be over. The 97's going to drop back so watch for him hanging back. And Tony's like come on he's waving let's go come on come on let's go we need some help. What you saying Dave? Well I, I can't confirm that strategy that you'd mentioned about falling back but I can confirm that Tony on his own was doing everything that he could. He reached out and he said guys that is all I've got I'm giving all I can. That was when he was running alone. It's 
got to be frustrating for Stewart to track that eight car lap after lap, hoping it bobbles, hoping it bobbles. And so far, yeah. he just can't see it. Junior's not going to bobble. I mean, he just needs, he, what he has to have is help. And he doesn't have those guys close enough to do it. And Junior, on the other hand, he's going, yeah, get that 97 out of that pack. He wants to see that car as far back from the 20 as possible, Tony Stewart, because he knows that 97 of Kirk Bush is not on the tail of Tony Stewart. Tony can't do anything with it. The teams have done all they can for their driver now, barring a caution flag, and even if a caution flag, these guys aren't coming to pit road. It's all up to the man behind the wheel. There are the Uries. Tony Uri Sr. on the left, Tony Uri Jr. on the right. Tony Uri Sr. working with Dale Earnhardt for so many years. And there's Joe Gibbs watching his driver, Tony Stewart. Try to earn the Joe Gibbs Racing Organization a second Daytona 500 trophy. When Dale Earnhardt's Dale children back a little bit. wanted to go racing, that was Dale Jr. Carey and Kelly, the daughter. He turned them over to Tony Uri Sr. I said, okay, here you go. Here's my kids, take them racing. See which one has some talent. And obviously, he has proven, <laughs> Dale Jr. has proven to have some great talent. First Bush, Scott Wimmer in the lap car of Kyle Petty. And that's not to say that Kerry doesn't have talent as well. Junior has certainly demonstrated himself to be a top-notch driver. Yes, he has. And he's trying to win NASCAR Racing's biggest prize, the Daytona 500. He'll be five miles away when he comes to the start-finish line this time. Afternoon sun beginning to cast long shadows over the Daytona International Speedway. And now just two laps remaining in this race. Stewart just can't get to him. Kirk Bush got back about three or four car lengths there. No help to the 20 car, Tony Stewart. But remember, we think back to what happened to Bill Elliott at Homestead. Last Dale Earnhardt Sr. here. And, and his father in 1990 with, on the last lap right about, about right there. here. I got yeah. old Jules Jr. Got a tire. Or? You're perfect. Not a problem at all. We've been stopping short for him all the day. And lost the race. <laughs> He asked me about fuel. And Tony Uri said, you're perfect. We've been stopping early because Tony Stewart had a problem with fuel. Fans come to their feet as Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Tony Stewart take the one for me. We're in the final lap of the Daytona 500. Jr. took the lead from Tony Stewart with 19 laps to go after he trailed Stewart's orange Chevrolet for much of the central part of the race. Now he's got to hang on for three quarters of a lap to earn a victory in the sport's biggest event. Stewart not close enough to make a move yet. It's all going to come down to whether Earnhardt has a bobble or a problem in this final third of the lap. You can't get emotional yet because you've got to get off turn four and back to the start-finish line. And you can see it now. The legacy continues. Dale Earnhardt Jr. wins the 46th Daytona 500. Second, Scott Wimmer third, Kevin Harvick fourth, Jimmy Johnson fifth. For Dale Earnhardt Jr., his first victory in the 500 in his fifth try. Well, there are some happy, happy, happy people. But none no happier than him. Oh, that's right. You can't overstate the months of preparation that go into running this one race. These teams take these cars to the wind tunnel, various engineering rigs like chassis dynamometers and seven post rigs to test them, get them all dialed together for this one shot at getting their names inscribed on the Harley World Trophy. And it's Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s who will be inscribed as the 2004 winner. Matt? A hug from Danny Earnhardt. Tony Yuri Sr., it's the Daytona 500. This track is so meaningful for you and the Earnhardts. What does this mean to win it, finally? Whew. I know what uh, Big E went through all them years trying to win this race. Whew. We just won the Super Bowl of this, this NASCAR racing, and uh, you don't believe how hard we worked to get here. We got to thank John Andretti, Slugger, Michael Walter. Uh, 
Thanks, everybody. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> Tony, he is like your other son. This has to be special for you to help him win this dream. Yeah. These two kids I got here, Dale Jr. and Tony Jr., uh, they both worked their guts out for this race team. We worked uh, 14 hours a day, seven days a week for the last month and a half to get here. Trying to build a car better than this car, we didn't think this car was going to be good enough to win this year. We just couldn't do it, so we rubbed on this one the week before we came. Worked the body shop to death and the fab shop to death and Wayne, Mickey, and AJ and Bruce and everybody else there. And, uh, they did it, man. You guys back home, we did it. All right, Junior stopped right there, and he calls these fans. He's got something to say, I think. Just get out and acknowledge these fans. They love you. Here he comes. Here he comes. <laughs> get out of the way, photographers. Let me in there. You want to know what winning this race means to someone? Have a look. driver to win the 500. He might get that thing stuck in the grass. It's wet from all the rain we had here last night. I think there's enough people down there to push it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he said, I saw my daddy do this back in 19, what, 1998. Yes, sir, BP. I'm in victory lane, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. will once again climb out of his victorious Budweiser Chevrolet. In the same victory lane where six years ago today, his father celebrated a win in the Great American Race, the only time his dad won that race. It took his father 20 tries. Jr. is here as a kid. There's Tony Urey Sr., a big hug for his other son. Now the family's here. Teresa Earnhardt. So, how long's the party going to last? Man, I don't know. <laughs> you got a race tomorrow, you know. Yeah, it's going to be hard to do that, huh? <laughs> Good God. I'm Daytona 500 champion. I can't believe it. Forever, Dale, forever. Yeah, I'm just amazed, man. It's just awesome that uh, I couldn't believe I passed him by myself. What Tell me about it. What's going on here? Tell me about it, because you, you were thinking about it for a while. Oh, I was trying for a damn while, but I didn't know uh, it's going on forever. It's like a magic trick. Um, I tried and tried to figure out how to pass him, and I got a run on him, and uh, made it happen somehow. I don't know. Yeah. But you don't know what you're doing at that point. You're just trying your heart out. And uh, I had a, I had a, I had a great car, awesome car, built by Tony Senior and all the guys. I want to say to my sister, and my mama back home, all my friends. Uh, good God, I can't believe it. It's the greatest ever. We talked during testing. You said you thought it's harder to win the Daytona 500 <laughs> than to win the next Hell Cup champion. Yeah, I ain't got to worry about that no more. <laughs> sure don't. Man, I tell you, it's a hard race to win. You know, it's a season in itself. That entire race is just, there's so many things going on, so much running through your mind. You know, I've seen it, been lost so many times by dad over and over, and I, I was taught so many lessons by this place where I ever got behind the wheel. and. God, I'm glad I ain't got to worry about it no more. Man, this is awesome. You're only the third father-son combination to win the Daytona 500. Dale, your father won it six years ago today. Yeah, I mean, he he was over in the pasture side riding with me. I'm sure he was having a blast. Uh, believe it or not, I'm real surprised. The Goodyear tire did good all day. I didn't expect our car to handle them so well, but uh, the car drove awesome all day. It's real, real loose there at the end, but uh, you know, has had to be that way to be able to run good on old tires. And uh, Tony had a great car. We kind of been such good friends, you know, and, and uh, we helped each other all day. And and uh, by the way, uh, thinking of my other teammate, Michael Watcher, I'm glad he's all right. That was a scary looking accident, but I got a full week ahead of me. It's going to be exciting. Yeah, you're going to be a little busy for the next few days. Hey, yeah. you're leading the championship standings, yeah, too. For the first time in my life. This is awesome. <laughs> Congratulations, Thank Dale. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is the Daytona 500 champion of 2004. 
He described the pass on Tony Stewart for us. Chevy congratulating Dale Earnhardt Jr. and the number eight Monte Carlo on today's big win. Our Chevy winning moment. Dale Jr. was here to stay, and he was finally proving he was more than just a famous name or just a prolonged sob story. I'm here with Dylan Hart after he just won a Die Hard 500. What's the question, dude? <laughs> uh, well, um, how was the race? Well, it was hot, but it was fast. Yeah. Did you just like, just like you told me to go. Yeah. Are you gonna give me some money when you get home? I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> you spent enough down here this week. Oh, okay. Junior was set to continue the Earnhardt legacy but due to several business differences, it wasn't capable of progressing with the team Dale Sr. spent his whole life building for his family. Instead, Teresa Arnhart denied Jr. partial ownership of DEI. Oh, that's it. I'm telling you, that that's is a brutal a, hit. It is. Claimed he was too focused on becoming a rock star rather than winning races and even hoarding legal rights to Dale Jr.'s own name. Teresa was right about one thing. Dale Jr. was becoming a bona fide rock star. I like my music the same way I like my race cars. Fast and loud as hell. Dale Jr. was so unusually mainstream for a NASCAR driver. You still owe me that 30 bucks. Oh no, man, you said that was a gift. You're a dirty liar. What you got? This put the ball in his court. Sponsors were flocking to wherever Junior was going. Race teams had his phone ringing off the hook. But with a move like this, you would essentially deal the final dagger to the team your father worked so hard to build. We're here today to talk at last uh, about my contract at DEI. So we're calling this press conference here today to announce that after a year of intense negotiations and intense effort on behalf of Dellen Hart Incorporated and JR Motorsports that we decide that it's time for us to move on and seek other opportunities to drive for a new team in 2008. Dale Jr. wasn't going down with the stubborn captain on the sinking ship at DEI. 2008 was going to be his year. We talked with many teams but one stood out above the rest and it becomes apparent it became apparent to me that the man it became apparent to me the man I wanted to drive for. I've known him since childhood. He competes with integrity, and most importantly, he wins races. I feel like this decision will give me that opportunity, and hopefully I can give my fans what they expect and deserve and have a whole lot of fun along the way. And so today, it is with great honor to introduce my new boss for 2008, Mr. Rick Hendrick. Without understating or overstating anything, this is huge. Well, I know there are a lot of people that are looking down, smiling, Dale Sr., Ricky, Papa Joe, all come to mind. Uh, you know, something we've heard told over the years, and this is a question for both of you, heard bits and pieces uh, and heard a little bit more today about a story about a napkin story and a, and a napkin contract, perhaps. Can you guys tell, each one of you tell your version of the story, Dale Jr.? Uh, <clears throat> I had been fortunate enough to be invited on a trip with Kenny Schrader around the Midwest to uh, run some dirt tracks, and uh, it was going to end up at Topeka, Kansas, where Rick was racing, and my dad was going to race with Schrader in an arc race. And so I'm running around with Schrader 
uh, for the whole week. And we get to Topeka, and uh, that's the first time I'd ever met Rick. And he was introduced to me and said, have you got a contract to drive for anybody? I wasn't even racing, you know. But uh, <laughs> I was not even close. But um, I, I, you know, I thought it was a joke. And he wrote down on the napkin, wrote a contract down on the napkin, and I signed it. And uh, we were joking around, but obviously he's a pretty smart businessman. <laughs> and uh, I figured it w even if it was uh, a joke, I'd better sign it because it might come in handy one day. We have those ripple bumps all the way up off the corner. Now, what's happened to the nine of Casey Kane? He got stuck he in the middle, and back he goes. I, I think that's a sucker hole. You can really go forward in a hurry, but you also can go backward in a hurry when you get up in there. Junior to the bottom. There he comes, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Junior Nation. Now we'll be seeing the sea of green waving in the grandstands. Dave Blaney helped propel Earnhardt Jr. to the front. Well, you can bet one thing, and I know that Junior doesn't really feel all this way, but he wanted to get by that eight car if he possibly could. Crowd loves it. Junior, by inches, led that lap. Six one thousandths of a second he led that lap by. He is getting it, baby. Three laps to go when they come back. Pace car is going to make that hard left turn, and it'll be three laps to decide the 30th Budweiser shootout. In 1979, Buddy Baker led 18 of the 20 laps and banked $50,000. Now the race is longer, the stakes are bigger, and here we go for three laps. Good clean restart by all those guys up front. Those first six cars get off nice and clean. Looks to me like Jeff Gordon says, I'm going to go with you, Tony. And I think that's the only choice he has right now. Kind of left Junior out there. We've got to see if Jimmy can catch up here in the 48 and give him a shove. Reed Sorensen in that 41 car. He's going to be pushing Jeff Gordon in the 24. But there comes the outside line. They get the run off turn two down the back straightaway. Now Jeff Gordon says, whoops, I shouldn't have gone with you, Tony. But here they come. Tony's got a good line behind him. Four cars tucked up tightly. I just, look at Dave Blaine in that 22 car, one of the cars that took four tires. I think those guys with four tires, if they could get clear sailing here, get open, get some openings, they can get up there. Watch this, it's the old Harvick move around the outside, the one Kevin used to win the 500. But this time, Stewart edges ahead at the line. Two laps to go. Let me tell you what, I'd get the old photo camera ready for the start-finish line, because this is going to be a tight one. Yes, Calling it is. T. Taylor Warren is on the roof. He's the man that shot the photo finish of the first Daytona 500. Whoa, He's boy, Hamlin is all over the place in that 11 car. He got it. He wrecked. He just didn't hit anything. Oh, there's somebody else back there that almost wrecked. Sorensen in the 41. I mean, they got are a piece of the wall. Banging on each other. He got a hit from Casey Mears. Look at Jeff Gordon going backwards. He got in the wrong line. It'll be a lap to go. Here comes the 11. Earnhardt Nation up front. Here they come, boys. White flag. One lap to go. Yippee, this is all right. I love it. It's the bell lap. And they're three, almost four wide in the back. By one there, side by side behind him still. Stewart almost, in second, looking back from Earnhardt. Almost every position changed places as they came to the white flag. Junebug's been getting off a of two real nice. If he protects the bottom, little blocking if he goes down the back. One back there, 48's got a big Johnson run here behind him. coming on the outside with Sorensen and Mears. Watch that outside, watch the outside, protect the bottom. Now is that yellow line your best friend? It is now, it is now. Because you can't pass below it, but that outside line, they're getting a run. Here comes Johnson to the high side. And Earnhardt comes up to block. That opens the bottom for Stewart. And the 30th Budweiser shootout goes to the Amp National Guard and pal of Dale Earnhardt Jr. Yes, sir. All right. All right. All right. Hey, bake it, baby, bake it. Bad now this car all you want to, but we got ourselves a race car. Yes, sir. And that's race car spell forward or backwards. Hey, good job, boys. What a race car. <laughs> this might be a 500 winner y'all got here. You just don't know it. Look at Tony Jr. Is he not going to be just beside himself? He Look came over to Hendrick with his cousin, driver Dale Earnhardt Jr. And his team will go to victory lane. Stewart is second. Hamlin came up for third. Where did he come from?
Jimmy Johnson and Casey Kane, the top five. I know this is not a points event, but it's been almost two years since Dale Earnhardt Jr. Congratulations, buddy. Congratulations. That's, That's Rick Henry. That's the man. boss. That's the boss. Mr. H. What a way to start our deal, baby. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. But they have not been the victory lane of any kind since May of 2006 at Richmond. It's something amazing, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think he just did, Rick. Uh, he ran 70 laps pretty amazing, didn't he? Casablanca is the last line. Was that the last line of Casablanca? I think it started something big. I can tell you that. <laughs> Look at this crowd. <laughs> Whoever said he was going to lose fans? <laughs> I think he gained some more. Dale Earnhardt Jr. will drive into the first Sprint Cup victory lane of 2008. It's Rick Hendrick coming over to offer congratulations to his newest driver and newest winner from Hendrick Motorsports. Steve Letarte, the crew chief of what became the fourth place car for Jeff Gordon. And Chad Knaus, who's Jimmy Johnson, finished third. Dale Jr. has led 47 laps of this race, the most laps anybody's ever led. In the Budweiser shootout, car owner Rick Hendrick notches his fifth win as Junior goes to victory lane in the shootout for the second time. Matt Yoko. Congratulations by the boss. Junior, welcome home. What's it mean to win not only Daytona again, but for <laughs> owner Rick Hendrick after all you guys have gone through the past six months? That was fun. I mean, the shootout is a neat race. And I had a blast those last few laps. I got some great help from my teammates. I, di I, didn't, I didn't win the race without Jimmy pushing me. Just didn't win it. So uh, thanks to him and Chad and those guys for working real hard to get that car ready. As a backup, backup. Thanks to my team. They had a great pit stop, got us out second. Thanks to everybody at Hendrick Motorsports. <sighs> the National Guard? Huh? That's awesome. Hey, everybody that's helping us, Sony Adidas, this is, I hope the fans enjoyed that. Wow, man, it was fun. I'm so happy. I'm a new team, Victor Lane, man, it's, it don't get no better. I think you can see there, driver 88, all jacked up. Race one, win number one for owner Rick Hendrick and Junior here at Daytona. Krista? Matt, we can certainly hear it in his voice. You know, we've seen Dale Jr. and Tony Stewart work together here at Daytona quite a bit, but you were on the, the wrong side of that coin tonight. Talk about your event tonight. No, I'm pretty happy. I mean, it's it's hard to beat Dale Jr. I mean, he's one of the best restrictor plate drivers there's ever been. So, uh, you know, he learned a lot from his dad, and I'm not sure he's not better than his dad in all honesty now. But, uh, in the Budweiser shootout, when Dale Earnhardt Jr. took the lead, we were accused on some websites of turning up the volume around the grandstand. That was not us. Freddie Aldis did not slide that pot up. That's the fans coming to their feet and making the noise for Dale Jr. That is That was not enhanced audio. Well, it took him 18 laps, but from the rear to the front, he takes the lead here. Reed Sorensen in that 41 car staying hooked to the rear bumper of Dale Earnhardt Jr. in 88. You're looking at it right here. That, that didn't bump draft it. That's just plain old pushing right there. Jimmy Johnson dropped way to the back on the restart to preserve his pole-sitting car for Sunday. And look at those two cars. Look at the gap they put on everybody else because of that push they're getting. That was work to perfection. That was two guys that really had it figured out when they took the green. It's not going to do them a lot of good, except that these cats back here are going to catch them. I was going to say, they were really strung out, but now they're starting to pull back together. That's the transfer spot. Race right there. Look at the run. Vickers in the 83 car. It's getting through the high side of three and four. They'll be coming to the white flag. And you see why, Larry. I mean, the 78 car is dancing around, and uh, Vickers has got a little grip. He goes right by. He can drive that race car now. Hanging on to her. What a comeback for Brian Vickers. 
He is in the final transfer spot. Remember, Nemechek can fall back on his speed and be in the 500. Nemechek will not push the envelope because he don't want to get up there and pass Kenny Wallace. Nemechek's in the 500. Back. 78, two back. I tell you what, I am shocked. I, I know this is some good racing right in here, but those two cars up front have put a huge gap on everybody else and holding it. This is the first time we've seen anybody get away from the lead pack. Uh, yeah, that's the biggest. That's the biggest lead I've seen anybody have here all week. There's Kenny Wallace in the 87 car trying to come to the finish line to get him the Daytona 500. Oh, three wide behind the leaders. It sorts out. And the second checkered flag for the Sprint Cup cars in Speed Weeks. Dale Earnhardt Jr. again. Boy, Menard in the 15 got pushed all the way down on the apron. Oh, he went down there. He had nowhere to go. He had to try to get by Kenny. I don't know why, but he had to. This is Dale Jr.'s third victory in a Gatorade duel. He won in 2003. He won in 2004 and went on to win the 500. Bergen is standing by with our winner. Dale Earnhardt Jr., after going nearly two years without a win, switched teams, and now he is two for two here at Daytona. Well, how about that? What was the most difficult, most interesting, most fun moment of the race for you? It was pretty interesting with them old tires about midway through that race. Everybody sliding around, wrecking and carrying on. Made that pass down the back straightaway, got a run, and got, got underneath the 41 and the 12 for the lead. I didn't think I had the 12 cleared. I don't know if he lifted to let me have because he just to keep from because I might have wrecked the field there, but <laughs> I come on up front of him. It must have just been inches. He had to have lifted a little bit, but he got a run on the inside of me there. That was pretty fun. Old tires are tough, man. We was all running up the top because we wrecked on the bottom down there sliding around. But I'm uh, real proud of my team. They give it Bimley a great car. The engine uh, guys work overnight to bring us uh, the replacement motors down here. They're great, as we see. And uh, I want to thank Ant National Guard, all our sponsors, all the fans. That was a fun race. I hope they enjoyed it. Oh, we did indeed. Everybody wanted to know how this new NASCAR car would run at Daytona. Your evaluation of it? Okay. Honestly, it's got to look great on TV. Um, it's harder to drive. But ain't we supposed to have to work hard, you know? I mean, it's hard to drive, but it's got to look great on TV. It sure looks, it sure is a handful in the car, and, and it reminds me a lot of old style race cars. I've seen the way they slide around and get loose and stuff. So I think it's all right. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll tone them in and get them better, but so far, it got a good grade from me. Junior's all right, too. He may just be the best restrictor plate driver in all of NASCAR. Matty. After an incredible speed weeks, Dale Jr. could not complete the elusive triple and came home ninth in the Daytona 500. 2008 wasn't as smooth sailing as everyone hoped it would be. Jimmy Johnson was the only driver winning races at Hendrick Motorsports, leaving Gordon, Mears, and Jr. winless in 2008. When the Cup Series arrived at Michigan, the 88 team was trying to end a 76 race winless streak. Okay, let's, let's see what Junior's doing right here. Just Truck shut it off. Just like Baby Kyle said, exactly what Kyle said. Baby He's coasting it. it. He just shut the engine off. That's how he's saving fuel right now. They have told the 88 to stay behind the caution car. It, and it's hard to stay behind the caution car when you're trying to save fuel and you've got to drag back. And then when you drag back, you can, do the, you can do this when you're back in the pack. Everybody does it when you're back in the pack. But when you're the leader and you have to be right there, he's coasting along. It's tough to save fuel, man. He is in a... He's in the worst position he can be in. Yeah, he just looked up in the mirror and saw all those guys come down pit yeah. road now to get fuel. See, he needs to drop back here with the, the 26. Yeah, he needs to drop back, you know, 100 yards, 200 yards, and then run it up and try to, to monitor as much as he can. But it's tough, man. Okay, and, and, and Junior, if, if he's that close, boy, I mean, that that's the last thing he wanted to see right now was this deal. He, he could have, you know, if he had a shot of pulling it off, Two it's things. trouble now. And the last thing he wants to see is a guy spin and not hit the wall and not put any debris on the racetrack, and then they ride around for five laps. Right. He wants this to be They're a quickie yell. A quickie yell. When the race reaches its scheduled conclusion and the caution flag is out, NASCAR will make one attempt at a green-white checkered finish. We'll get the green flag, a lap, then the white flag, then the checkered flag. So it'll be two laps, one attempt. If the caution comes out after we go back to green, the race is over. NASCAR will use scoring loops and videotape to determine the final finishing order. This is when you wish 
your teammate was four laps down and running right behind you in line, so he could just push you around the racetrack. I, I, you know I, I don't mean? think you can do that anymore, but, but though. You remember, they, it oh, used no, to they, happen. They'd bust you for a little while, but yeah. you, you could do it. You could do it until you they get once You get one shot at it, baby, one shot. But you, his teammates are far enough back in line that, yeah. that they can't move forward because you're not allowed to advance under caution. But you hear him. He fires it up, shuts it off. Picking up all Bang. that garbage right now on his tires. On his tires. He's not the only one. The nine cars down there, the eight cars down there. There's other guys that are having this issue. This is where this could be bad. And and this is where this is on a restart. If this thing stumbles on a restart with all those guys behind They're it, just gonna pack it's just going to pack in there. Gonna, it could get, and we've seen that in, in other forms we, of racing. Did we see a little shot there? 76 races since Dale Earnhardt Jr. has been to victory lane. He's one attempt at a green white checker, too, just so you know. Marty? Bill, I can't describe to you the nerves down here in the uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. pits. I just asked Tony Uri Jr., are you going to have enough? He said, I have no idea what's in the car. But let's give Tony Jr. credit, not lose sight of that before anything happens. He put him in a position to win the race. He got him a top five out of Charlotte with a wrecked race car yeah. because of strategy. Got him a top five out of Pocono because of strategy. So he has put him in another position to either win or get a top five out of this fuel or not. It's been a good call. And, and you can see he's trying to scrub the tires. It's hard to scrub the tires when you're coasting a car, but every time he'll, he'll He'll fire it up, and he'll give it one or two cranks, but he's got a lot on his mind right now. There, there's a man, I I can't even imagine what he's going through right now because you, you know, just like Tony Uri said, I don't know how much fuel's in that tank. D Dale doesn't know how much fuel's in that tank. Coming to get the green, Earnhardt Jr. last stopped on 148, Kane in second, 155, Vickers in third on lap 187, Martin 155, Kenseth 188. Back and forth, so your box will be full. One attempt at a green white checkered finish. Got cars on the apron. Pace car to pit road. Boy, if that car doesn't go, it's going to be big. Green flag. They bunch up behind Earnhardt. Comes Vickers down on the bottom, taking a look underneath the eight car. Kenseth going high, yep, in the 17. He's Junior. Got, he's got gas right there, man. That thing is going up off that corner. Looks like Mark Martin might be out of fuel. Five over the nine. The eight car is out of fuel. Mark Martin. Still clear by five there. Junior's right back down on the bottom. He's been up at the wall the whole time. Now he's right back down on the bottom, looking for that shortest way around the racetrack. Just, and, and he knows there's grip there. You can hear the fans, man. This will be the last lap of the race. White flag at Michigan. Oh, well, we got crash, somebody crash, coming off of the crash. crash, crash, crash Michael caution Walker. is out. The race is over. But remember, Junior has to maintain speed coming back around. He's just got to maintain his speed. We, we went through this with Biffle, how many, right. whatever it was at Texas. So as long as he can maintain, there's the answer to the, your, your race buddy question. Dale Junior <laughs> breaks it at Michigan. Yeah. Before the race, Lindsay talked to him earlier this week about the pressure to win, and he said it's put up or shut up. This might be the day he's able to put it up. And, and you got to say, that's the one good thing about Dale Jr. When he took this ride, he said, look, I'm man enough to take this ride because I know it's all on me. Because we know the Hendricks organization can win races. It's all on me. That, that's a big deal for Dale Jr., man. That's a big man that, that and, stepped and up there and took that. Big man. deal for Tony Uri Jr., too. Those guys made some great calls down there that put him in this position. Nine cars going up. 76 races since he last went to victory lane, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. is the winner at Michigan. That's incredible. That's pretty exciting. That's pretty gutsy. I mean, that, <laughs> I mean, that was, that's a great move on that race team's part to gamble and put him in that position. Yeah, great, great call. I don't think we're going to see any burnouts. No, great call and great driving by Dale Jr. because he had to save some fuel, so that's yeah. great driving also. Let's go down to Marty Snyder. Uh, I've been around Tony U Jr. a long time since he was a young man. I've never seen him so relieved or so nervous before that. And he's out of gas. Junior just radioed in. He's out of gas. He's stuck on the racetrack. Was that the most nervous you've been towards the end of a race, Tony? I'm telling you what, that's, uh, this is pretty special. I've lost a lot of races up here, me and Pops. And I'm telling you what, this is, it don't get no sweeter than this right now. I mean, this team's been real close. We had a couple took away from us, and I told these guys we got to get our A game back together so we can get ready for this chase. And they stepped up all day, and man, it's, it's awesome. Can you take me through the emotion of the winless streak? I mean, I know this is a big load off for your race team. Well, I mean, I don't look at it as a winless streak. I mean, we won Daytona and we won stuff, and people, but this is their first points race, so they'll get off his back about it. But 
that kid's been driving his heart out all year and he deserves it and man it's just it's just awesome to be able to win a race and get that over with and let's just go get a championship today yeah. in the life lock 400 from michigan his first win in 76 races Junior's made it to victory lane. Matt Yoakum is there. He opened up the season with a nine points all-star win at the shootout. Congratulations, Dale. I know this one is big. What's it mean to you to finally win for Mr. H, but also win a fuel mileage race? Well, I didn't know. We didn't have enough gas to make it. Look at that caution come out. Uh, <laughs> we, had, uh, we had it set up to win if we didn't have the caution. But thanks to the fans, happy Father's Day. Congratulations to my team. They deserve it. Congratulations to Rick. Come on in here. Congratulations, buddy. You did a good job giving me everything I needed. <laughs> you walked up to the car, Mr. Hendrick. What did you tell him? Well, he... <laughs> He told me maybe I shouldn't come today because he wasn't running that good. So I said, I'm glad I didn't stay at home based on what you told me. Great job. Proud of everybody. Because of family throughout the years at Hendrick Motorsports, this win is special for you and for Dale. But why is it special for you? Well, you know, just, uh, you know, we started off and he won the clash and then the 150. And we said, we don't have to worry about that winning a race now. And then nobody counted it because it, was it wasn't a points race. So, uh, I mean, it's just, we've been waiting for this, so, been so close. But it's, that's all right. No, no, no. Happy no, Father's sure. Day, everybody. So, how concerned were you on fuel? Uh, it is what it is. Is it going to have enough or it ain't? They run out, come into the white, stumble off the straightaway. So, we were close. We were going to stumble to the finish. Probably not win the race, but they caution saved us. They can write what they want, but we won one. <laughs> Dale Earnhardt Jr. scores his first points win since Richmond of 2006. His first ever victory in the Cup Series at Michigan. Dale Jr. snapped the streak, but a much larger streak loomed. Trouble on the racetrack. Trouble. That's Dale Earnhardt Jr. Big trouble involved, I think, with David Gilliland. Guys, this is what we've been talking about. This final this practice right here. Trouble here. Car in the wall it is Dale Earnhardt Jr. has hit it a ton. Casey Mears. Oh, gets tagged. And nowhere hard. for Dale Earnhardt Jr. to go in that 88 car. Two more cars hard in the wall behind them. Flag stops prior to that caution. Boy, Brian Vickers, Dale Earnhardt Jr. That ain't oh, going to work, on. boys. Vickers hard. Here we go. Kyle Bush, the dominant car of the day in the wall. Sliding, slamming into the infield. Jimmy that Johnson totally uncalled for. Right. Oh, hard, Junior. hard lick for Junior. And he is head first into the tire barrier. That's it right done. here. That's oh, what wow. got Sorensen in trouble. Oh, yeah, Sorensen Junior. just a victim here. And even all that sand and gravel can't slow a car down. He slowed it down. That's the yeah. key thing. That's yeah. intentional. He just yeah. didn't That's have any way of slowing his car down. Reed Sorensen, wrong spot at the wrong time. That's key. Barnwell spotted for the 43, and all he saw was 88 dive inside, and all of a sudden they're crashed. He didn't know why. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the wall. Hold the break there, guys. I'm coming. Hold the break. He was running in fourth position, and again the caution out for the 88 car now in the wall here. Yeah, you can tell it's going to be a long day. When you have that beat melting like that, it doesn't get better. Just going to keep having that problem. The 88's around. Front straight away. Junior brings out the caution. 17 if you're keeping count at home. Yeah, I was pretty sure Just a little bit of left rear there. Finished. I had to put the bondo around the right rear to the bump. Dale Jr. caught up in it as well. Smoke just pouring out of the 88. And Dale Jr. is scooting away. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, he's slowing, isn't he? 150,000 people on their feet. Junior is slowing. He's out of fuel. He's out of gas. Out of gas. And as at Indy, the leader at turn four does not get to the flag. Perfect. Perfect. The closer wins it. Once again, where did he come from? <laughs> Golly gee. 143 races. Four years. Full of crashes, mechanical failures, 
heartbreak, and self-doubt. NASCAR would return to the site of Dale Jr.'s last win, 143 races prior, where he previously snapped a 76 race winless streak. Dale Jr. across the start finish line, six laps remaining to his first win in 143 starts. And when you think about Dale Earnhardt Jr. and what he's meant to the sport over the years, today his 450th start in NASCAR's top series. He's been around a good while. Dale Earnhardt Jr. very much aware of the fact that he hasn't won in a while as he comes around here and sees five laps remaining. Five How's it right feeling here, inside the race car, Wally? Oh, I, I got over five seconds. So back to here. Five more. That right there is what you want to hear. I mean, you, you've got five seconds. Your car's working great. You got five laps to go. I mean, basically, you're on cruise right here. Just don't make any mistakes. But the biggest thing is he's not being pressured. So. Yeah, if he had someone right in his rearview mirror, you could understand feeling the pressure, thinking about the long windless streak, and maybe having your hand forced into a mistake. When you got a big lead, that's got to help. Yeah, but I don't think Junior's ever really thought about the long windless streak. He just yeah. thought about winning the race and, and getting to where he's at. You know, he's always played it off, and I don't think he played it off as much as he, he truly, truly felt that and believed that, that he was going to win again. Junior off a of turn two and down the back straightaway. When he comes around this time, it will be three laps remaining. I know what he doesn't want to see is a caution right yeah, here. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I was just looking to see where Jimmy Johnson was to see if he was having an issue, but he's kind of fell in to a pretty good rhythm, and Jimmy's trying to stay ahead of the 24 car of Jeff Gordon. But he's way off the pace he's way running. Off. He's running, last lap was 184. Two, three laps ago, he's running 188. Now, Jimmy Johnson changed engines, came from the back to the fifth position. Ryan Newman did the same. He's one lap down in 17th. And Carl Edwards, who had to start at the rear of the field after qualifying problems yesterday, finds himself 11th in the latter stages. I hate they paved Michigan, to be honest with you, because these fans are going to burn this place <laughs> down <laughs> when we get to that point. It was just going to be a big old waste of money. But. I, Junior has, I mean, this has been a great day for these guys. No, oh, it has. They have dominated. This will be the 93rd lap he has led as we get two to go in the Quicken Loans 400. You're on board with Dale Earnhardt Jr. Look at how that steering wheel, how steady that is. Yeah. Under white, he just needs to get back to this. And then it won't matter if we get a caution because the green white checker situation will be out the window once Dale Earnhardt Jr. gets the white flag. And he sees it right now. There you go, buddy. White flag. One more time for him, Two more miles to victory for Dale Earnhardt Jr. as the crowd stands and cheers here at Michigan. Oh my God. I, I, I wish people at home could be here to see these people in the grandstands and to hear them. We're up here in the TV, TV booth, and you can hear these people. Junior down the back straightaway and into turn three for the final time. There is going to be a party in Junior Nation tonight. Three by winning, boy. Hell yeah. <laughs> the streak is over. Dale Earnhardt Jr. back to victory lane in Michigan. Thanks. Yeah, I double checked it wasn't the 500. We really want it. <laughs> All right. Hey, good job, man. I know you guys are been waiting on that one. I know I am. See that monkey fly off his back when he took the check flag? You, you know, but I, I think his voice said it all when he said, I really don't know what to say. After all that time, listen to the crowd. After all that time, he expected it. And, and I think that said it all. 
He hadn't been able to celebrate in a while. He's going to make this one last. Burn it down, Dale Jr. After 143 races without a win, he's making the donuts on the front straightaway. Popular win for the driver, and I'm sure the crew chief is smiling as well. Let's check in downstairs. Well, Adam, there's hugs, there's tears down here and everything, and uh, Stevie, a lot of big wins in your career. Where does this one rank among them? Now, this one's up there a long ways. Uh, I just want to thank everyone involved, Diamond Mountain News, Chevrolet National Guard. We couldn't do it without them, but uh, you know, HMS, Dale Jr., he drove a great race, and this crew, it's been a long time since they've won. They really deserve it. I know it's hard not to be emotional. When you think about the emotion, is it all the work that went into it that makes you emotional? Uh, yeah, a lot of close calls, a lot of seconds. Good to finally win one. Now this one's off our back. Uh, looking forward to the chase. Uh, if you weren't planning on using that engine again, were you? No, I can't thank Hendrick Engines enough. We ran way over our limit in practice. And uh, man, that was 200 beautiful laps. The, their engines are unbelievable. How happy are you for him? Uh, I can't say enough. Him. Uh, He's done everything I've asked him to do. I know he's taken a lot of criticism in his career, but I've never seen one ounce of criticism he deserves from me. He's driven the wheels off at every lap, and uh, it's just been fun. It's been a lot of fun. Were there days you wondered if this would ever happen? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there was, but uh, these guys kept my heads up. My wife, my family, Mr. Hendrick, they, uh, they always keep you pointing in the right direction. I believe we're about to have a celebration, Adam. What do you think? I think it's on, Marty. It is well underway in the grandstand. And when Dale Earnhardt Jr. climbs from that race car, his team going to celebrate with him. They've been close so many times. You heard Steve Latar talk about the runner-up finishes. Today, they definitely received the fruits of their labor. And this is the second consecutive week. We've seen a long winless streak come to an end. Joey Logano got it done last week at Pocono. Today, it's Dale Earnhardt Jr. Let's go to victory lane and Matt Yoakum. And over the past four years, Dale Earnhardt Jr. has finished second seven different occasions. This year they said they were gonna take it to a whole new level. And right now he's on the phone talking to the boss man, Mr. H, Rick Hendrick. Special day for the entire organization. Long time coming. And what a party it's gonna be for Junior Nation. Special colors this weekend that he helped design and fitting end, drive them to victory lane. Victory Lane, what the boss, Mr. H, have to say? Oh, he's just upset he couldn't be here. Um, that's a great race. I want to thank my sponsors, National Guard, Diet Mountain Dew. Uh, great to have the Batman on the car today. Uh, we just had a really good car, and uh, Chevrolet was real fast. Just uh, pretty amazing. I was, those, are last, those last 15 laps are the longest laps ever. And uh, I don't know what to think about it just yet, you know what I mean? Junior, it's been four years. Your fans have stuck behind you. This guy right here, Steve Lahart, Steve Latart, stuck behind you. What's the most satisfying part of this victory? To do it for my fans. They stuck behind me for all these years, and I know exactly uh, what they've been thinking about and how long they've been wanting us to get to Victory Lane. And so this was for them. I uh, appreciate their loyalty and their support, and we we wouldn't have made it back to Victory Lane without it. So. Uh, that's who we got to give all the credit to. You look at today, it posed so many challenges. New track surface, the tire change, 
the weather itself, what was the biggest difference? Was it the change that Stevie made on the second stop with the spring rubber? Yeah, we changed. Well, yeah, we. I don't know what he, what all he did, but he made it right, and uh, I think it was real fast. I want to also thank Sprint. Uh, they do a good job uh, supporting our sport. Don't get enough credit for it. I appreciate what they do. Uh, tr the track surface was great today. Um, the tire was uh, was a, was a tough one. A little bit of curveball, but we didn't have any trouble. We got to put on a race and. Uh, I think NASCAR and Goodyear for, for, for the work they did. Like those prolific poets from England once said, the new boss looks a lot like the old boss. Dale Jr. back in victory lane. You get the feeling now that he's won one, the floodgates could open? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm telling you, he could be, after last week, he could be sitting here two in a row. And like still. those prolific poets from England said. <laughs> could what be did two they in say a row. again? I don't know. <laughs> it, was, it was something that he said. <laughs> Finally, the wait is over. Dale Earnhardt Jr. back in victory lane. We continue with our post-race coverage on TNT after a break. Following that win, another winless season unfolded. Oh, contact there. Not going to be good. The this will get ugly. Casey Kane around. Jr. hits him. There's just no room. We've talked about that earlier. No room up through there. In turn two has just brought the caution flag out again. It is Dale Earnhardt Jr. Running seventh at the time. Uh, Trouble. Dale Jr. I thought Stevie. He blew up. Yellow flag. And the flames out the exhaust pipe from what Dale Earnhardt Jr. Up. Oh, there he goes. Stay as low as you can. Get below the line as soon as you can yes. there. As as Seventh you can. caution there of the go. day. Yeah. Thank you. And it just basically cooks it when you get something like that. And we talk about the temperatures going up. And it was already losing power Friday, from, from all that. a really nice race. Sorry to make it all the way. In the wall goes Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Greg Biffle. Get low. High 33. Come the caution close. flag. Were the Michigan winds flukes? Was it time to hang it up? Through all the twists and turns. Through all the hard hits. All the concussions. all of the ups and downs was there anything left to prove or did you owe it to anyone to keep going because they couldn't do you still have that passion The drive, the determination, or are you simply a washed up, has been, overrated, waste of a seat? They say old drivers can't turn back the clock, but they can wind it back up again. Green flag is in the air. Buggity, buggity, buggity. Let's go racing, guys. NASCAR's most popular driver, Dale Earnhardt Jr., won the 500 in 2004. This is his 15th running 
of the great American race, and now he has led in 10 of those 15 tries. Here's the pass on the 99 of Carl Edwards. And I don't think there's any mistake in it. These guys have been told there could be some weather coming because I, I see a lot of intensity. Look at the 18 trying to force in front of, a, of, of the uh, 43 dark car of Elmerov. I mean, these guys are starting to make some pretty bold moves here. Watch Dale Jr. They're not messing around right now. They're going like it's going to be the last lap. Got a little lead there. Uh, Might have gotten out a little too far. Let's see what he can do. Look at those eyes. How can you drive a car 204 miles an hour looking back? I mean, that takes some talent right there. And folks, don't ever underestimate how fast these guys are going, how close they are to running together, and, and how hard it is. It's just not as easy as they make it look. These guys make it look easy because they're the best drivers in the world. The way these guys are driving, they're cutting each other off, they're, but they're, they're not wrecking so far, the front guys at least. Whoa, Joe Whoa. Jr. just picked up a big piece of trash on his grill. Uh, looks, looks like, like a, a trash bag or like something. Looks like a trash bag. Or a, perhaps a piece of bear bond, oh, the bear bond that came off Ryan Newman's car. My gosh, if it's now, bear bond, it'll stick there and you can't get it that's off. That's right. That stuff is so sticky, hopefully. Hey, you it, need to get right up behind the pace car. Something come up on our grill. It Hopefully it does not. Make sure you have the electric paint off and get right behind the pace car. That's Steve Latart. See, that's, that's adhesive, tape. so that's... hopefully it doesn't block the grill opening. It's not just going to blow away. That's not a trash bag. No, if anything, it's going to get tighter. Yeah, that's that's not going to come off getting up there against the pace car. I, I don't think so, Larry. Maybe Buster could reach out and pull it off. Buster Otten, the uh, passenger I'm reminded in the pace of so car. many things. His dad hitting oh, a seagull gosh. on the back straightaway damaging his car. Yeah. And Dale Earnhardt. Still on there to get hot. A mile from victory in a Daytona 500. Tries to break the draft, cuts down a tire in turn three of the final there, lap. There's probably what he's going to run over and pick up right yeah, there. I'm, I'm surprised he didn't see that. I'm surprised well, that the spotter or him or somebody didn't tell him about it. But, Larry, is that blocking the opening to the grill, do you oh, think? Oh, that thing is huge. It, it, it's definitely over part of the opening. But make it. Here's what I would say. It's two to go, <laughs> yeah, right. but get that piece of trash <laughs> on the grill. Yep. It might help him, you know, if it doesn't hey get guys, this, Hey, guys, this could be an advantage. He's only got to run three laps. That's going to make his car more slippery aerodynamically. Um, he's in the front. This could help him a little bit. It's, yeah, it's, it's uh, not going to overheat in three laps, I don't believe. No, nah, I don't either. And I, I tell you, I think you're right, Mike. I think it'll help him. Well, especially with him being out front and getting some air into that grill. But, yeah, the more you can block that up, the faster it's going to run down the straightaway. So I, I wouldn't even worry about that. I don't even know if I'd even told him about it. Well, you know what? What are you going to do about it? You can't pit. Now, most of what you see in black on the front of that car is not grill opening. The grill opening is a narrow slit within the grill area, and it has hardware cloth or mesh uh, right in it. So pretty narrow is the amount of actual opening to the radiator there. And from what I can see, that bear bond is not covering it very much. So let's set the field for you as they come around to two laps to go. Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to win the Daytona 500 yet again. Brad Keselowski for Roger Penske trying to give the captain his second victory. And remember, it was Dale Jr. who gave Keselowski his big break to drive Jr.'s car in the Nationwide Series. Now, right behind them, Jeff Gordon, the 24. Kyle Busch in the 18, coming from one lap down. Carl Edwards and Denny Hamlin. Jimmy Johnson and Ricky Stenhouse. Matt Kenseth and Kevin Harvick are the top 10. And wins this year count more than ever you win it you might be in the chase it might be the win you need and it's a chance to get one right here kelly earnhardt miller dale jr sister looking on and here we go green flag two laps dale earnhardt jr gets to that restart box and he is gone yeah that car is gay i mean it takes off now he definitely doesn't want to get too far out we know that's not good and he is making a pretty good gap here here Better comes watch. the two. Brad Keselowski on the outside. Got a little bit of help from behind. Gaining on the leader. Junior comes up to cover. Jeff Gordon now leading the inside row. Unless Keselowski or Bush or Denny Hamlin in the 11 drops down. It's Hamlin. What a move by Hamlin. Woo now if we get back to the white flag, we have a race. 
Look at Stenhouse in that 17 in the middle, back and forth. And Boy, back he just shoved Kyle Busch right out of the way. Ricky Stenhouse in the 17 to third place. White flag with Stenhouse up in position to challenge in that blue four. You know what, Larry? I believe that tape's going to stay on there, and that baby's going to come home a winner. Denny Hamlin has not lost a race this week. He's number 11. Keslowski, the 2012 champ, battling back to the top. And Dale Earnhardt Jr., the Pied Piper of Daytona, trying to hold them all at bay. And Kyle Busch was trying to make a third line at the top of the racetrack. Boy, here they come. Now, this is where it gets interesting. We've seen a lot of passes off turn four to the start finish line, but that 88 is pulling away. Less than a mile to go. Oh, we got a wreck. Third generation star, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Brings him to the flag, checkered flag, waving, it's over, it's Earnhardt. Oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Good job, June Bug! Woo! Reed Sorensen's race ends up in a crash. Harvick into the wall past the end of pit road, and Carl Edwards 99 all torn up. Here comes Kyle Busch backwards across the start finish line. Factor across. Now, the caution flag waved before Earnhardt took the checkered flag. Officially, the race ends under yellow. NASCAR will review. I can't believe it. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. They'll review all photographic and video evidence. It'll be a while before we have an order of finish. Reed Sorensen is okay. Carl Edwards moving around in his car. The Pied Piper leads them around for the final lap. And, and then how can you take some bad luck? Get something on your grill with three laps to go. A piece of tape. You couldn't come down Pitt Road and put a piece of tape on there and do any better. The black number three returned to Daytona this week. Where'd that big piece of black tape come from? <laughs> I can't believe this. <laughs> this is better than the first one. Remember, in the offseason, his crew chief Steve Latart said to Dale Jr., This is our final season together. Let's make it memorable. They already have. It's yes, awesome, sir. dude. I can't quit watching you right now. Steve Latart, his crew chief. A champion of the Daytona 500. I've said it and I've said it and I've said it. Those two guys are going to do a lot of good things this year together because they, they, they know what it means. But Dale Earnhardt Jr. has gone winless in four of the last five years. and won't be able to say that about 2014. Or keep counting his runner-up finishes in the 500 yeah, that, because that 88 back car, victory though, lane. That thing could get out front and he could just go from one side to the other. I mean, he, he was just had a fast car at the end of the day. I believe Dale Earnhardt Jr. has got a little celebration planned here. Let's see what he's going to do. He's not a whole lot he can do right now. The whole front straightaway is full of wrecked cars. He is saluting the fans and coming all the way down the front stretch, reminiscent of when Alan Kowicki won his first cup race and did a self-styled, as Kowicki called it, Polish victory lap. It's the wrong way around, but it puts your face right in front of the fans where he can look him in the eye and hear them cheer. You know what I love? I mean, to see Dale Jr. that excited, to see him just pumped, man, about winning that race, and he should be, but look at him. He's like a little kid in there. Yeah, I don't Enjoying know if I've every ever minute seen of it. him that pumped up. No, I haven't either, Larry. It's just so good. Look at him. He's going to jump out of that thing. He's going to be up on the side of the door there in a minute like his dad used to do. And he's about to be a 40-year-old little kid. But I guess there's a little kid in all of us, Darrell, yeah. especially when you win the 500. I never think about him being old. I still think about him being June Bug. 11-time NASCAR's most popular driver, and that is voted by the fans. <laughs> and Dale Jr. captures the flag at the start-finish line and begins boy, to head oh toward boy. victory lane. They are going to have some kind of celebration back at the old Hendrick Motorsports shop, probably over at Whiskey River, have a little uh, special night or something. This could be big. And Phoenix better put more grants to him.
car owner Rick Hendrick headed for victory lane yet again. Kozlowski is off the pace and there goes Dale Jr. The 88 is out front at Pocono with less than five to go. White flag is out and they are saluting Dale Jr. at Pocono two and a half miles away from his second win of the season. Oh. Off of turn three for the final time. You got it, bud. He won the season opener at Daytona. Second checkered flag of the year for Dale Jr. at Pocono. <laughs> good job. Awesome car. Good to have the best car, but y'all did a good job, man. to this point, but it lined up where that could happen now. Our junior, Kevin Harvick, Joey Logano waiting if something happens. Harvick, another big run right there. That's his strong part of the racetrack. Two thousand and fourteen didn't end on the highest note for Dale Jr. With the championship slipping out of reach and more concussions accumulating, this felt like the end of the road. But there was a silver lining. Not on the cup side though. Dale Jr. had finally won a title as an owner, six years after leaving his father's now defunct race team. He won it with racing phenom. Chase Elliott.
might have burned the rest of those tires off that nine car in the celebration, but they're going to be setting up the stage, and there'll be a, a trophy presentation shortly for Chase Elliott and his team owner, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Well, 10 years ago, Dale Earnhardt Jr. and his sister opened the doors to JR Motorsports, and here you are as a winning owner. What does that mean to you, Jr., and your sister? We, uh, we're very proud. Uh, Chase and the whole team uh, did a good job. I want to thank Napa for coming on board this year. I felt like that they had a real good shot at it. And uh, we've had a lot of great help from a lot of people that has been a part of our business at JR Motorsports. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people that have uh, that have helped it get to where it is today. And some of those people are still there and some aren't. But everybody that uh, has ever worked there has to be pretty proud tonight because they had an influence on getting us to where we are today. And, we got a lot of help and, uh, from, and resources from Hendrick Motorsports, and that's a big deal to us. It's helped us really get a lot more competitive over the last several years, so we got to thank all those guys that built all those great engines and get all kinds of engineering uh, support there, too. So it's, uh, it's been a labor of love, and we've really enjoyed the ride, and we've been proud to be part of the Nationwide Series. I want to thank Nationwide for everything they've done for the series. It's been a real blessing to have them involved, and the series is better off for it. Congratulations, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Go meet your driver. Good news is Chase Elliott will be back in the car next year. Okay. Dale Jr. would go on to win a few more races, deal with a few more concussions, and most importantly, win more Xfinity titles as an owner. And continue to run down the veteran in only his 33rd Xfinity start. The left rear quarter panel, oh, and there's your flag. Tyler Reddick, your 2018 Xfinity Series champion, everyone. They say you're never as big as the sport you play. Dale Earnhardt Jr. almost was. He was the heart and soul of stock car racing. He was the prince of a racing king. And with the weight of the world on his shoulders, he survived. He persevered. He conquered, and most importantly, he made dad proud. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. And follow us on Twitter.